and welcome to our last English session of the week. Week one, term four, done after today. It is Friday the 26th of February. Friday means it's reading comprehension day. You're all going to think that I'm a real meanie in a minute when I tell you what your task is or you might all be thinking, yes, I'm so ready for a challenge. This is brilliant. Mrs. Bullymore has put on the website exactly what I'm ready to do. That's what I'm hoping you're going to say, because of course you have all had a rather lovely week of half term, a rest, hopefully and a break. And so I'm hoping that you are going to be well up for the task today. I'll explain it in a moment. Our starter today links with our spellings. You will remember that yesterday I spoke to you about um, the Oak Academy had a really good lesson about double consonants, which is what your spelling sheets, your spelling objective is for this week. So as a follow up to that, please could you go and do the second lesson out of the two. So this time to practice and apply double consonants It's a 20 minute video. Do that please, it will really help you with your spellings. I'm so looking forward to seeing how well you are all spelling and what your sentences are looking like. I think these videos are really good, so I hope you found them useful. I think they explain things nice and slowly and it all makes lots of sense. That's what I hope is happening. So this should help you with your spelling objective this week. So do this first and then this is the bit. I'm asking you to do um, a comprehension. Now, normally at school, I would ask you, Mr. Cottle and I would ask you at the end of each term to do a, um, a reading comprehension, a sort of assessment or a sort of test, we would call it, so that we can see how well your skills are progressing and what we need to focus on next. So it's a really good opportunity for Mr. Cottle and I to take stock of where we are and to look at how well you're understanding what you're reading. So um, even though you're not in school at the moment, I still thought it would be quite good for you to do this. First of all, because actually they're really good comprehensions. There are two. There's actually two papers to it. They're not long bits of text, um, but they're two separate papers with two separate sets of questions. One of them is on Barack Obama, and it's a really interesting non-fiction information text. I want to see how carefully you are reading this. Can you read it and think about what you've read and understand what you've read and be able to answer questions on it? That's what you should be able to do. And if you can't answer the questions straight away, which is fine, because if you're like me, you will forget things, go back to the sheet, go back to the um, text and skim and scan with your finger until you find the bit of information you're looking for that will answer your question. Because lots of the questions to this text are retrieval questions. That means the answer is in there somewhere. However, there's always going to be times where you have to use the clues as well. So you will need to make inference um, answers and think about why somebody's doing something or what that could mean. And that's when you have to use your detective skills. All of these skills you work so hard on in class. And so I just want to see how well you get on with this. So I'm going to ask you, um, I certainly think that most of you are capable of doing it, I'm not going to read the papers through to you because part of your challenge with this is not just to answer the comprehension and to, and to use those thinking skills, I also want you to really focus on your reading and your decoding skills, so your fluency. So there's no prizes for reading it the fastest. Um, or even the, the, the most fluent right now. What I want you to do though is to have a go. So you get your finger and you start at the beginning and you work your way through. And there might be some words that you don't know what they mean. There will be some words and you don't know what they mean. So you do what you've been shown to do and trained to do, which is you read the rest of the sentence around it and you think about what could make sense. What would make sense of that word? 
If it could be um, slightly different, can you think of an alternative word that kind of would still fit in the sentence? That might just help you with the definition of the word. Can you look at the word? And for example, if we look at this one here, famous, could you look at that word and think, oh, I don't know what famous means, or I can't read the word famous, but it begins with F-A-M, fame. Is it to do with fame and um, Looking for a root word is one of the ways that you can help yourself work out what a word means. So sometimes a word just has a different suffix on it, as it does there, and it might be that if you remove that suffix, hit the suffix, you might be able to work it out. Use all the clues you have been shown to use, so use all those skills. So your first paper is about Barack Obama ex-United States president, twice removed now I think, so he was our president before Donald Trump. Um, really, really interesting man. Read about him, answer the questions please. There are some sheets on the website for paper A, which is this one. When you've done that, move on to a completely different text, paper B. So I want you to do paper A and paper B exactly the same as you do at the end of every term in class. Paper B is a different text. It's called The Dancing Mermaid, and it is a fiction, so it's not a true story. It's not containing information for us like the last text was. This is going to involve some inference skills. This is going to involve you really thinking about the character. Why is she doing what she's doing? Why is it saying what it's saying? Try to be really clever with picking up on the clues. Use the picture to help as well. But you'll see it's like a little mini story. Read through and enjoy it. If you need an adult to help you read, that's okay. But please give it a go first on your own. Read to the end of the sentence, go back, see if you can read a word. If there's a word and you find it really, really, really tricky, like this word here, Think about those skills of covering over part of the word and sounding it out. Can you work it out by sounding out? Look for groups of letters that make one sound. This is where your sounds right should come into play as well. So do what you can to read the second paper and answer the questions. Do that and I'll be really impressed. Let me know how you get on. Let Mr Cottle know how you get on. If you're finding that a little bit tricky, and some of you will find it a bit too tricky because not only is it two big long texts, but actually the questions are quite hard, then there is a mild task on the website for you to choose if you prefer. Okay, I don't want anybody to sit there and really, really struggle, but I do want everybody to sit there and really push themselves. And I think there's a difference between really pushing yourself and challenging yourself and actually finding it a real struggle and it's just not what, not what you want to be doing right now. So there is a mild task as well and it's called Smina's Big Splash. So that's a good comprehension for you to do as well. There's your alternative, okay? So that's it for this week. Do your comprehensions. I have put the answers on as well so you can mark and see how well you did. Like I say, let me know, let Mr. Cottle know. We'd be really, really pleased to find out how you got on. Okay, week one done. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. Enjoy and take a nice break. And I look forward to seeing you next week, week two, with a whole new English unit. Take care. Bye.